sexy comedy with Hilary Herbert and Josh Edelman. Josh, we have our first um, like real fan. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you got fan art. I got fan art. You don't know the person. Don't know the person, and I don't know if the person is who they are saying they are either. Uh, that would be something you would think. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so. Yeah, this couldn't just be someone who's a fan. This is definitely the exact person I wanted to be pretending to be somebody else. I didn't go that. I didn't think it was that. <laughs> their, their, their English is broken too perfectly for me to assume that it's... And they knew it's... to pretend that they have broken English. <laughs> it did to, cross my to mind. Hide, to hide it even better. <laughs> it did cross my mind. Only someone as smart as the person I would be in love with would know to go through that many layers. <laughs> <laughs> of, of deceit oh my god okay so we're here on an early saturday afternoon just barely saturday afternoon i'm drinking my first cup of coffee oh really your yeah. first one well i tried to make coffee but uh, oh i'm so glad i get to sit here while you Reed, enjoy your first Reed cup of coffee had like while i was gone had used all my coffee pods oh, god. so i tried to make coffee out of his coffee grounds and i did not like it oh, wow. so i went to the gas station what a monster hi reed um uh, your roommate, Reed. Yes, yes. Um, and also hi, my and, middle and name hi, and Reed. my father's name. Right, lots of reads. Lots of I got reads. lots of reads in my life. Okay, so uh, and I love them all. Um, uh, okay, so we're here on a Saturday early afternoon. So I'm in like a Saturday little early afternoon. I just want to relax for the rest of the day. So that's I. I almost put on jeans and I was like, I can't do it. Um, I ha Okay, so we have a fan. This fan has created an Instagram account and a YouTube account that is called Hillary Herbert Fans and then used our logo. I'm almost... I'm almost worried it's a, it's like a scam. <laughs> I am. That's where I am. That's where, that's where I fall. With, very uh, suspicious. With any, am, with any fandom. I, used to I am a, very suspicious. I used to have a joke that like uh, when you have one per, when you have one fan, it feels like you have a stalker. It's like you could have hundreds of people liking everything you do and you'll pay no mind to hundreds of people. When you just have one, you're like, right. what's wrong with I you? I know, I know. I, I, I did ask. I was like, so where did you find out about the podcast? And tell me a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, what? Oh, I, I don't, I, you don't want to engage with you. You don't want to engage oh, with I've engaged. crazy fans yeah. either. Uh, lightly. What was the other? Oh, and I, but I also don't want to post that because I don't want to lose them. <laughs> right, right. Don't go anywhere. Um, and oh, what, they're probably hearing all this. Now you're going to make me cut this because you don't want to lose. No, no, no. The they can. I'm, okay. they're, we're, it's comfortable as of We're happy now. to have you. Yeah, we're happy to have you. But you got um, to watch out with engaging. Sure, sure. I've gotten random Instagram messages from people and then engaged a little bit mm -hmm. and come to regret it so much. Well, the stockings, of course. So, the, so much. Yeah. <laughs> the stalking's interesting for I think for women I don't know about for men um I it's for women like you'll see those memes on on Instagram <laughs> get, let me get one fucking yeah, thought know, out I... Josh for God's sake I'm, I'm on that cup of coffee yeah yeah ride, yeah Ooh, the, okay. the cup of coffee uh -huh. ride <laughs> so um so the so for stalking uh if it's someone that you like mm -hmm. you. <laughs> Uh, if it's someone that you for a woman if it's someone that you that like the woman likes almost no stalking can be too much yeah like like absolutely suffocate me with wanting to know where i am and all that stuff but i think i think the, but that's for most men can't figure out they don't know that they're not that person for you but i feel like you know when the woman likes you it's because you don't do that at all <laughs> it's because it, there's no stalking going on was it mary do you remember mary lane ramsey who i remember the name who was that which one was that again that um, crazy lady no no no. she's, she's not crazy no she's sounds a, like a crazy person she's name. a comedian uh, oh just kidding sorry <laughs> I forget how the first part of her joke goes. She goes, she goes with men. It's like either I can't find them or they're jumping out of the bushes. Yeah, um. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, yeah. Every once in a while, lightning strikes the right person. Um, I have so I have comments now on YouTube that I had requested and appreciate. Um, I have one gentleman who constantly, although I don't show my feet on the YouTube, at least certainly without like. 
I mean, I have pretty feet, but they're not petite. I don't think I've seen your feet. But I have a YouTube subscriber that (laughs) that constantly talks about how they love my feet. So I I don't know. I can't. I I assume most of those are bots. What about what about like on your? I feel like sometimes on your Instagram you have like clear clear toed shoes. Yeah, yeah. When I'm dancing, that's probably what he's saying. Oh, okay. And this is his way to like. Oh, like feel like he feels like he'll get your attention most this way. Anyway, I'm putting my foot up for you. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what I really this is what so I told you I've been holding this in, and and I'm just gonna. If you bounce. really want to pay off the podcast? Get to get like a OnlyFans feet pick thing going. Yeah, I, I know that'll it's, <laughs> it's wild. That'll, that'll, that'll how, finance. That'll finance. I know, the podcast. and it wouldn't even bother me. Like, be obsessed with my feet. Like, it doesn't yeah. make me feel gross at all. Like, what do I care? But um, okay, so I told you I I was like oh I wanted to tell you something and then I held it in I didn't even share too much of my stories although I went into it a little bit okay so here's what happened I I had an epiphany Mm -hmm. about sort of bringing more things together that I like doing sort of into a bundle so I was going to a doctor's office a couple weeks ago whenever it was and when I was going to get on the elevator there was a woman coming out. Uh, I forget what they call those. Those like the the like um, product reps okay. that go to the doctors and they have to make an appointment and they're hot usually. Like they're sexy women and they're like, hey, like here's this new thing, you know, put it in your office. And so many jobs closed off to the unattractive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a funny like the injectors. You really I'll get into it more. Like, but like you doctors, really got to get a specialized skill if you're. Yeah. If you're so not like hot. if you, these plastic surgeons like they're injectors, they're like always hot women. They're mm-hmm. always these really cute fucking nurses, and that's like its own kind of competition. I went out with a uh, with a uh, one of them. Yeah. Once. Yeah. There did she was there a lot going on upstairs? No, it didn't seem so. so. Um, <laughs> so She's very nice though. Which can be a, a benefit depending on what you want from them. But um so so I was like, oh, like what a fun my brain was like, oh man, she gets to go around to like office to office and like in her cute little outfits. And I was like, Oh, that's great. And then I was like, Oh, but the business side of it, the salesperson side of it is stressful. And she actually looked a little defeated that day I, I don't know that she made a sale in that office or however the it works but um she looked a little tired but hot hot lady and she had her like roller bag with her and I was like oh that's cool and I just sort of tucked it away in the back of my head and then I was thinking about I started the wheel started spinning and I was like there's so much so then I started following all of these doctors on Instagram, like a, a huge kind of array of doc, like Beverly Hills doctors, mostly a few East Coast doctors. We'll I'll get into that in a second. And uh, then I started going, oh, well, where's the because I talk about plastic surgery on here so much. Where's the plastic surgery podcast? You know, where are the mm. where are the fun, juicy, you know, whatever. So I started looking around for that and I've just begun my research into this but there's there is an unsaturated market for plastic surgery podcasts for all the stuff that patients don't really realize is going on not to mention it is a playground of immaturity and uh deep um these surgeons are deeply uh um what's the word uh not self-conscious um insecure yes deeply insecure and then have sort of uh some of them maybe the larger maybe that's what makes them good surgeons is they look at someone they're like if i was you i'd be upset about my hairline <laughs> my nose my cheekbones well they Got don't necessarily i don't come across <laughs> i don't come across a lot of surgeons i don't think that's the part that they're deeply insecure they need to be about like, like uh, you need to be about. empathetic slash insecure. Yeah. <laughs> Feel other people's insecurity. Yes. Yes. Sense. And there That's are the those superpower. out there and those are the best ones. Yeah. But what happens is there's either like it's very high school. 
There's like and that they're famous mean. one. They're mean. They're they're pa- they're they're nasty. Mm. They're they're they all pretend to play yeah, along. Yeah, because they're not they're well. not there to tell you you're perfect the way you are. <laughs> I'm not talking about the what I'm not talking about how they are to their patients. Ah, uh, uh, to other I'm, people. No. To their to each other. To each other. Yeah. They are. They are. It is clicky, and it's um ganging up on people, and it's snide, and it's um. It's a whole politics game that like, they have to play. It's like the art world of surgery. What do you mean? Plastic surgery. Do you know the art world well? I mean, because I mean, the, the, I know, the way I know, the art world is now is... I know is, comedians and I know oh, filmmakers. Oh, that art world. I thought no, you no, meant... no, no, I'm saying any art world because it's like, it's like my dad's an eye doctor mm-hmm. and he's got a bunch of friends who are eye doctors. But like, you know, you go in to see the eye doctor. It's like, look at this, look at that. Is this better? Is that better? Here's your prescription. You're going in and it's like, hey, make me look beautiful. And then that person's like being like, I'll make you look better than this person who will make you look crazy if you go to them. Right. So it's like your work, you're like your work is walking out there for people yes. to see. Yes. If you're a bad like heart surgeon, nobody sees the dead patients yeah. that come into your office. You yeah. can be friends with the other yeah. heart surgeon, but you're seeing the work. Right. So it gets really competitive. You're a walking it's... work of art for your plastic surgeon. I agree. <laughs> and uh I think that's I think that's Right. And so it's like it's the competitiveness of the of like the stand up comedy world. Exactly. Yeah. With what you what is presented as a super professional, you know, some of them are very I guess intentionally unprofessional, like on Instagram and stuff like that. It's But it, it really does feel like it's cute. the easiest way to tell if you like if if you want to go to that doctor is looking is just straight up looking at someone they've done. Yeah, absolutely. To. And that's a advice that most of them would give you is like look at people's whatever, but What's the what's the Some HIPAA of them, stuff on that? Like they they can't be like, hey, I did this person, can't they? Well, they have the 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 patients will agree to sign. Will agree to they'll they'll video them for their Instagram or whatever. But then what happens is some of the doctors will manipulate the after and how like like Photoshop lighting the how far the camera is mm, away yes yeah, yeah, some can, of them will yeah, shift I worked in commercials for a while some too. of them That's will of shift that. things it depends how how lame the doctor is um you have to like like when you're doing a burger king commercial by law you have to use an actual burger king burger but like bobby flay is making that burger yeah king yeah yeah burger yeah, 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 using yeah, 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 there yeah, yeah. so you're getting you're looking at like the bobby flay right right burger king burger, burger. <laughs> so what happened so then and then i remembered when I was uh, seeing my uh, vagina, the guy who surgeried my vagina. Um, That's a harder one to compare and contrast with. <laughs> um, they, uh, we, he, I told you, I had told you the story how he had wanted me to do his podcast. And so I said, oh, okay. But me and my friend Hannah had just started the idea for this podcast and she and I were going to do it together and we were going to do our first episode. I said, okay, but I want to do ours with you too, because he was fun. He was too fun. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but also an, as a fucking douchebag. And, um, uh, he couldn't, he fucked up. And then that, that's the thing it's doctors will do. If they fuck up, some of their reactions will be to just ghost you. And that's pretty much what happened in my situation, which is why I really went to town on him and I'm blocked. Uh, so <laughs> I don't do that. Um, that's actually the only time I've ever like intentionally blown something up like that. You know, like I went out, I, I, I made a nasty comment under one of his posts knowing that it would have a, a reaction. Yeah. yeah, because I just was so not wrong. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't do anything wrong until that point, but I intentionally did that. Anyway, so he had... Um, you woke up and chose violence. Yeah, I woke up and chose violence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I had a therapist at the time, and uh, the one who was warning me how dangerous portals are. <laughs> and uh, Portals? Portals. Like, like, like... Two other dimensions. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are yeah, dangerous. Yeah, real, real prof- <laughs> another, another real professional. And um, she really is. I mean, this is that you really can't trust anybody. And um, wait, this is the psychologist. 
Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Okay. I mean, just <laughs> blowing up a lot of spots here today. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, you're so, not under any HIPAA laws. <laughs> and uh, so we had we had scheduled to do his podcast. And then my friend and I were going to have him be our first guest on our podcast. And it was just going to be us asking as many questions as we could get in in half an hour. And they were all going to be inappropriate. They were all going to be, you know, not professional doctory right i really wanted to, when i was dating with psychologists i really wanted to have her on play clips of friends doing stand-up and have her diagnose <laughs> of the shoe amazing, fee, shoe amazing. Fees. <laughs> so <clears throat> so then when i'm seeing the woman coming out of the doctor's office i'm going oh oh so then i start listening to some of these podcasts that are out and um different so they're not they don't have that world doesn't have a cohesive um kind of landing ground for all of this conversation to occur they have um you know, this doctor thinks this should be done this way. And if this doctor disagrees, then they, you know, da, 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 da. And some of it's valid and warranted and some of it's just, catty. Un, yeah, catty and unnecessary. And so um, I was like, oh, maybe I can blend in. Okay, here's what I'm getting to, Josh. You and I are going to be doing a lot of trips to different, I'm not sure how it's all going to, merge together but I thought it would be so fun to give a platform to all of these different like very large personalities these people have and um or, or really interesting minds and some of them not good guys some of them especially like the ones that they uh some of them not good guys mm -hmm. and uh Where that could, not making the whole podcast that, but bringing that element into it a little bit. What do you think? Yeah, I think you should have guests. If they, if the, if the, if the, if the plastic surgeons, well, but I would you know, want to, you could, you could, you could, you could, you could definitely, if you wanted, rebrand this into hard plastic comedy <laughs> <laughs> but no but there is a... i think this scares people yeah, off yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. no it'd have to be a, it'd be a, it'd basically be starting a new podcast yeah it'd basically be starting a new podcast but a podcast about plastic surgery would probably do well but people not are curious. just but it wouldn't be just plastic surgery it really would be like um the the psychology behind a lot of I think it the important thing to always think about before getting into anything is how much do you want to do it? Right, right. Because like once you're once you're in something, it's like well, right, because it could like, get, get super stuck? messy. Because this is nice and easy. You get right. You this get, is nice it, and this easy. Is, this is like the tea. This is the yeah the Hillary tea show. Right, right, right. <laughs> or right. Then I was like, oh, what if I just somehow? I don't know how it would benefit them, but like if I was just like the blind item gossip of plastic surgery. So another interesting thing that happened, I was like, I'm, I want to start a, just for the fun of it, a West Coast, East Coast, um, like. You get a popular podcast where you're reviewing plastic surgery, start getting some free. <laughs> I thought about that too. You know, if I'm everyone's best friend, maybe I'd get a few services thrown my way. But um, a, I followed a very prominent, very successful, well-respected, um, not drama oriented east coast doctor and his injector followed me and i was like oh oh his injector followed me this is wow how you know i guess she's looking at who follows him and is like going after those people so she followed me so i follow her back because I, i'm like you're so and so's injector like i'm you know like yay this is fun she's a cute little blonde girl and um they all are and uh well, I feel like, you know, you're sitting there, you're about to get injected and some uggo walks in. You're going <laughs> to be like, <laughs> it's like getting, getting the vax from someone's like, I don't do vaccines. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, um, she follows me. She did that thing that people do sometimes where they'll follow you. So you follow them back and then they unfollow you because they're trying to like, 
I really don't like that. Uh, so she unfollowed me. And now I thought, oh, West Coast, East Coast. Let's start a West Coast, East Coast like beef. You know, let's get some. Let's get some. That unfollow is the biggest mistake in her life. <laughs> yeah, that unfollows. It's about to be the biggie Tupac of you know, plastic surgery. Just to injectors. stir, yeah, just to stir the uh, the competitive pot a little bit. You got to imagine the surgeons on the West Coast are the best ones, right? This is like this is like this is like the center for it. Well, here's a couple issues that are coming up with my idea. Two, two issues. Uh, I I think there's a fair amount of. I think there's very talented doctors on the East Coast and there's very talented doctors on the West Coast. And um, and then there's a lot of stuff in between. Um, or underneath, whatever. Uh, two problems. One, I only advocate for my surgeon. So I don't want to do something that would like, I guess, incur... You know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to give... I don't want to give people a... I'm not trying to market anyone else's career Mm -hmm. i'm very loyal in that way but so that i would want to manage i don't know how you know honestly like these people are so the male ego it they it would be the kind of thing where like they might not necessarily realize that like what i'm presenting of them they might see themselves as this and and i'm the way i present it is sort of to like show that you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't really support a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I want to go in and talk to them, you know? So how do I balance that? And then I don't... Um, so so my ex-husband was a one of the best professional poker players in the world. And so I was in that environment for over a decade. And um, it's very similar in that you have to there's there's some politics getting played especially when if you want to get in certain games and the way that things have like um grown throughout the years and then there's a there's this um site called two plus two and a lot of it is to analyze poker hands and different everything about poker but then there's which was what i was always interested in would follow along with the gossip like link to stuff and it would talk about poker players girlfriends or wives or who was like all the drama all the bullshit all the fun for me stuff because I'm I don't play poker so uh it's not I'm not a cards person but um so that um is a untapped market in the plastic surgery world Mm. and we could kill it (laughs) like we could really kill it so the yeah. other issue that I wanted to mention real quick was I don't – the confidence that you need – and I was always blown away by the women poker players because I walked into those rooms. If you're at a tournament, it is a 1,000 men and five women. So so it's, it's very um, – it's a lot. And these women would walk and sit down at the table. And if you're a woman at a poker table, for the most part, the guys will gang up on you and just – take you as an easy target and they'll try to get you out first you know like it happens a lot and um so like the the confidence that these women have in the poker world is insane and then they get torn apart physically on two plus two you know in the gossip whatever it's a it's just an intense um thing and for me i at the time i wouldn't have been able to handle it but now i have a thicker skin i i understand i know myself better are you gonna get a poker no. Uh, I'll watch it and I can follow along when they like show the hands, but I, I don't do math. So I don't, I, I don't sit there and analyze, like it's just not a thing. Um, and I don't enjoy playing cards. So um, no, the answer would be no. Although I have played a, I did play a tournament and a, a what do you call it? A, a benefit, like a fundraising tournament. And um even at that, the men at first were pissed because I was just playing like wild card. I was just playing, you know, loose. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, they, um, they hate that according to Oh, them. yeah. Hate it. And they got mad even at a fucking charity event until I started regaling them with stories and then I won everybody over. But um, <laughs> uh, so of course. I also 
don't the so talking about the confidence needed I I I wouldn't be able to do this as a uh, relationship free agent. I'm not going to go into other into these plastic surgeons offices as a single woman, you know, talking about sex and that's just like not my thing. So, I mean, it may seem like it's my thing, but it's not intended. Uh, I, I was saying, you know, I don't want to be going around. I don't, I didn't realize until I had really been popping into different doctor's offices how, um, different I am than I think the average person that comes into a doctor's office. And... So I thought maybe about shying away from that. And then I was like, no, no, no. Let's lean into that more. Let me, let me be more of that. And with them. With them. But in a in a in a professional container, right? So we know that I'm the podcast girl that does this stuff and, and talks about this stuff, but I'm safe because that's all I do. You know what I mean? There's no other I'm not trying to, you know, the like we've talked about the women that like doctor date and do all the sort of kind of the Doctor T and the ladies girls. The what? You ever see the movie Doctor T and the ladies? No. Or the woman? I think it's Doctor T and the woman. Uh, it's a movie where Richard Gere is a plastic surgeon, like juggling a bunch of women. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I gotta watch it. I'm gonna watch it tonight. <laughs> okay. I feel like I've referenced that movie before. On yeah. The no. Over my head then. Um. So there's a lot of elements of this I like. I could. So he. I have a whole life. I plan my whole life out now. I get to wear like sexy office clothes, which I love. I love being in offices without having actual responsibility. Mm. I like being able to be the person that's not, that doesn't need to be professional. I don't mean, I don't mind getting reprimanded for being maybe too whatever, boisterous or whatever it is, but I don't want to have the responsibility of like taking care of a patient or something, but mm. I want to be in an office. You know, I like the setting. That's why temping was really fun, you know, office to office in New York City. Oh, and uh, then the conferences. So they go on these conferences and it's very poker tournament y, you know, they're there to work. But then there's sort of a there's a social element to it for networking. So like like when uh, when like my dad would go to like optometry conventions and things take you know, me with be, you there'd be there'd be he just is retiring there'd be um before it's too late there'd be like places that have all their glasses on display so at like the plaster or they're just like women with a bunch of plastic surgery sitting there and the sometimes <laughs> mm-hmm yeah, sometimes this, they'll, this they'll be, work. which I would want to do too. Let me be the naked lady, you know, after I got my like tits done. So, um, Ooh, they're naked. I'm going to go to some of these. Uh, there's stuff. not a lot of that, but I have <laughs> seen that. Um, can I, can I feel, can I test the, yeah. <laughs> oh, for, very firm, uh, very firm. Nice. There's the whole, there's <laughs> lectures. Then there's, there's, they have them where there's tables set up for all Are that stuff. Vegas there's a, a range. Like it, there's Vegas. a whole range. Feels there's like whole, Vegas would be the place. It's a whole world. Yes. Sometimes. And, but there's so much content. There's so much to dive into of like untapped where like I can see the bigger picture. And then maybe sometimes there are the, maybe maybe I'm facilitating a conversation between two doctors that don't necessarily agree. How can we add some humor into that, right? And like just get a different element about it because they all like to say that the, the goal is, um, the patient is the priority and that's just not always the case for all of them the dollar is the priority for you know most of the time and then you have some that are just like really passionate well you don't want them to die that'll be a problem sure that would be a problem that'll hurt the dollar yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh do they ever like like would would they ever like turn someone down not because of uh like like a health reason but just like yeah, i don't want to do that it depends like on the doctor. Someone like wants like gigantic, like, like oh, absolutely, way too huge tits, and they're like, no, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> not gonna have those walking around with my name. But on it them. depends on the doctor. It's like a Marvel. It's like it's like a director turning down a Marvel film. I will not. 
yeah. make boobs that and big. And there are direct <laughs> there are directors that I'm an artiste. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um uh You know, and then it's just like, you know, what does that become? Where does that go? What does it become? But the lifestyle is very appealing to me. But then again, I would need, so like, like Heather Dubrow, she's on The Real Housewives mm -hmm. and she's married to uh, someone who I, uh, Terry Dubrow, who is one of the most, you know, respected um cosmetic surgeons out there he's on the show botched that you've never heard of which is wild to me that you've never heard of the show botched botched yeah so they take on like I've really of, difficult they take they take <laughs> on really they take on really difficult revision cases oh, people, and then they people that like went to bad plastic surgeons yeah and um so the so so the thing with heather dubrow is like not that god bless her but like do they name the botched surgeons on botched? No. So it's never like, oh, I oh don't you know. went to. Well, that, so that's the part that's so interesting, and that's where it gets really competitive and petty. They almost never mention, there's, a, there's almost never direct mention from what I've seen so far of um, who you wouldn't use. It's just sort of you're either going to figure it out the hard way or you're going to do a lot of research first. They, But you're not going to get a direct name from... Unless, like, I went to um, this woman who um, sets you up with... That's how I found my surgeon was, you know... Which is interesting what happened was she had sent... She had recommended... So if you, she'll tell you... Like, I mentioned a doctor's name. I mentioned this in my stories the other day. I mentioned a doctor's name... And she said, you know, no, 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 don't go to him. He he manipulates his results. Bad news. Um, and but even she will um, someone who who, you know, I shouldn't I don't want to start beef with this person, actually, but uh, maybe that'll get Maybe that's the way to go. Uh um yeah you're like you're literally like simultaneously be like i want to do a show where i like explore all the beef between these people well here's the but here's I here's don't want any beef here's the well <laughs> i don't want to be the beef i want to talk about if all their beef they have enough if you're beef. facilitating the beef you're part of the beef. yeah you're part of the beef so i'm willing to do that but what i need to figure out first is um i need to understand I just the, rode the trains to the concentration camps. I didn't have anything to go do with what's going on inside of them. Jesus, Josh. <laughs> so uh, I need to understand some of the politics a little bit better before I uh, insert myself into the uh, shit show because um, I don't want to give uh, – fodder to someone who is you know maybe intentionally hurtful um there are some really not not good people out there and so what happens is if those if there's a not good person out there and that person happens to be really talented at their job at the same time every it, it's just a wild game that they all have to play and I just think it'd be interesting to just put a, a little bit more of a spotlight on it um, because uh, they need some help. They need some help. They don't have um, – I see them all. It's funny now with the social media stuff. It, there's Now the competition isn't just with the talent. It's how are you marketing yourself, mm -hmm. you know? And it's there's only so many people out there that are going to get plastic surgery. So if the shitty people can so sell so them many on, of them had it all figured out, and then the goddamn internet yeah. came <laughs> along. They were just fucking riding their wave of the way they'd been doing business for thirty years. So fucking, it's fucking kids, their computers. <laughs> and then what I can do? It, okay, so wait, I was talking about uh, ab about um. So like this this woman, Heather Dubrow, she's protected because no one's going to go after Terry Dubrow's wife. You know what I'm saying? Like she she also is very professional and, and there's not much to to play around with. Um, but the 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 me getting into this is like 
I would want that protection. Like I would either want to be like so associated with someone that that everyone more or less respects that they they're not going to you know what I mean? Like I don't like I don't want to be I don't want to be like hit on or it gets you know what I'm saying? It gets like funky whereas if I were Are most of the plastic surgeons, would you say the majority of them are married or single? Second wives? <laughs> where, are the, where are most of them at? I think... My dad's best friend's Well, that was surgeon. another issue that was going to come up that I, that I thought of. I think... I'm going to say most of them are married. Married. And For, that... To their first wives? I think... So. I don't fucking know, Josh. But yeah, you know what? I, it's not like that. That's the thing that's also interesting to me is I don't... It's not... These are people, especially the talented people, the really people that are passionate about their jobs and care about the actual outcome and the patient and all that kind of stuff, which is, there are a lot of them out there. Um, it, um, they're not, there's, those shenanigans can't go on because their job is so, there's so much responsibility. It's so grueling. There's so much work that um, they can't be, well, if you're in it for the love of the game, fucking then around, love, then it's the love of the game that you're doing it for. Right. The other stuff doesn't matter. If you're in it for the other reasons, then the love of the game is probably suffering. Right. So ideally, obviously, like I would I would want to be talking. Well, it's you know, the, I want to talk to the fun single ones, you know, because there's a lot to play with there. And then but I don't want to be doing it as if I'm available. You know what I mean? Like I'm not it's just not that. Like I I you don't need to enter find the plastic surgeon you're in a relationship with so the other ones don't bother you. Right. <laughs> or or someone that it, maybe they're not in the plastic surgery world, but that no one knowing that I was with that person no one would fuck with me in that way. Well, like how you know what, are, I mean? what are you worried about them fucking with you? Um where your plastic surgery business is going to go under? <laughs> What, no, I, I, I've here? always had a sensitivity towards um, uh, the that my intention is pure. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's why, like, when I was at UCB and I had a crush on my teacher, I switched coaches because my intention was to study long form improv. Mm. And I and and I know there are people that can do both that they could you know start dating someone and you know do this other thing, but for whatever reason my brain just wants to make it real clear, you know that like that's what I'm doing. So I wouldn't like date inside that world. I didn't date a single person that, that, at my time at UCB. I didn't date any UCB people. Me either. <laughs> so um, but and then so then you've got like so then you've got the married doctors. And, you know, I'm coming on with like, certainly I would want the show to be have a sexual element because it's just part of who I am. So how do I make the wives comfortable? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to be on Hillary's show today or I'm going to do the thing mm -hmm. without it, without me being um, resented. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that's what I'm playing around with right now. I'm not sure how it's going to go but i got real excited about the idea yeah you got a little linger and then i thought okay once i've established myself this is where it gets really fun once i've established myself and i know you know who i can trust and who now i want who i can trust who i can trust yeah <laughs> because i want to set up a secret i'm listening i know but it's i couldn't get the words out <laughs> oh. I want to see, set up a secret gangbang club. What's a gangbang? Gang, like when a group of guys run a train on a. Well, no, I guess I guess that's yeah. I think that's, how many people does it take to, think, to qualify for a gangbang? I think a, a gang gangbang. Bang, I think the difference between a gangbang and an orgy. Okay. Okay. If yeah, my, yeah. If my porn experience. Okay. Let's hear about this. Is like gangbang is one girl group of dudes. And how many dudes would that be? I think once you reach three, it enters a gangbang. Okay, so we but, have. Uh, but this I feel like you know, you know, when I hear gangbang, the platonic form is is probably over five. Okay, so but but, but uh, you know, so let's say three, we don't do. Let's say three I feel to like five. Four, 
Let's say three well, to five. Three and up. I think, let's I think say it would be three th- and oh, up. Oh, three and up. Thank you. No, yeah. I'm saying for me personally. I think you three could have a hundred. I would be three I think it's five. still qualified. There isn't like a that's, new word. No, that's where I don't. Mm-mm. I don't think there's a new word when you get to like a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a second. So be, um, what would be, what's bigger than a gang? Uh, an a army, flock? An army bang. <laughs> <laughs> a military bang. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean? Uh, my dad was uh, saved a company. A company. A company. A hundred ba- or a more. Co- a company bang. A company bang. <laughs> Do you have to be a hundred people to no, I'm a, I'm a company. I'm one person. I'm a company. If you have sex with me, you're having a company bang. <laughs> <laughs> An LLC. So so once I've, you know, years into, you know, interviewing and going to these uh events and 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 I've really solidified Oh, because the other thing I want to do is um host these, you know, they'll have fundraisers or they'll have even just at the um at the what do you call them where they go like vegas and to the conferences conventions conventions or whatever it is um i need to host them because they seem like they could be very dry and that's fine the the actual information given should be dry but let's have the people introducing and let's add a little flair you know let's add a little excitement and um, I think I'd be great at that. But what did gangbang have to do with that? Oh, okay. This? So after Can I gangbang the doctors, after <laughs> so after I've solidified my space in this world, I now we now I want I want a Porn hierarchy. The- <laughs> I want a hierarchy of popularity. So like I will be obviously the queen sitting on top of of all of these people, and uh, I may have started a, a very small secret society our little dr gangbang club where we we i know that they're all safe and we all agree and every once in a while every once in a while just for fun we explore things sexually that maybe isn't for everyone a bunch of doctors gangbanging hillary yeah I started this with saying that I don't yeah. want to engage sexually. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like over the course of it, Once you'll, I, but you'll, you know what I'm saying. You'll get a group and so, of them and so people only get like whispers of it. They go, "Oh, is that the woman that?" Oh, and they only know whispers of it. And the people that are in this little whispers, yeah, yeah, whispers. No, no, no. Because the people, because the people that are are invited into this small group are, are they wouldn't if you if if it came out that you said anything, you're done. No more fun for you. <laughs> right? So it'd you're, have to be a really... Police. I'm really good at sussing <laughs> out who... I'm really good at orchestrating <laughs> real under-the-table gangbangs <laughs> with a bunch of high-end doctors. What I was going to say is I'm really good at te- uh, being able to tell listen, who keep listen, their mouth Listen, podcast shut. subscribers, I'm really good at keeping secrets about... <laughs> I am... I am really good at keeping secrets. I am a talking vault. about it on your podcast. I am a vault. I people tell me things and with very small pieces of information and observation. And the only way to find I those can, things out is to listen to I podcast. can put it together. And <laughs> I say so much stuff on this podcast and I still have a a just a a a deep well, well, of thank you. Of secrets to reveal on the podcast later. <laughs> no, no, no. You have to be able to keep secrets for people to trust to give you more secrets, and I really like. I it. think the best the best thing to do is to not have secrets. Wait, what? Yeah. To not have secrets? Yeah, yeah. A little life. That's why you are boring life. and I'm interesting. No, what are you no, talking no, no, about? I'm boring. I just just don't. Uh... Oh, do you think I'm boring, <laughs> listeners? Yes. Uh, no, it's just you. I just I'm a Scorpio. What do you want me to do? People have to tell pe- someone something, and people tend to want to tell me. What's the Scorpio thing? What uh, we like secrets. What's the What's the thing that happens when you're arbitrarily born in that month? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I was going to reference your friend's stand-up that I watched last night. I was so disappointed. Oh, yeah. Zach really loves. Uh, loves uh um astrology yes and so that was very funny i really liked his bit i was so disappointed to find out that he did not intentionally send me 
Oh, that, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. I can't express to you how disappointing. <laughs> because when I got, I got it in the middle, it sent at like four o'clock and I was running around doing my stuff and I was like, that's weird. And I didn't look at it. I just was like, oh, that's weird. And I assumed it was some sort of mass text or ma- I mean mass email or whatever. And so I was like, okay, but whatever. And then I got home late last night <laughs> and I was like, wait, let me, wait, oh, right, that email. What was this? And then when I realized it was his whole stand-up set, I was like, this is the weirdest experience I've ever had. And so then I'm watching <laughs> it going move, like, and move. it was really funny. What a move. And I was into it. I was like, oh, like, I, I, not traditional and a little ego maniacal, but I don't, what's the ego maniacal? Maybe that's not the right word. E- a little, you know, whatever, confident. But uh, it was a great set. I watched the whole thing. And, uh, and then was like thought to ask you like what the was that intentional why did I get that email and you were like no it was you did not we did not mean to send that to you and I was like oh okay well that's too bad because I was logged on to your YouTube Just when I was so funny when I was doing Josh has him. the key to my life and I trust you with it the only thing I ever see is when I. When I go, so I yeah, you've I, said this before. I have two browsers, and I usually use Chrome for all my stuff, and I just have my Safari. Usually, like when I'm uploading the podcast, I go on Safari. But sometimes I go on Safari, and I'm always like, "The fuck is my algorithm? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what the fuck happened here?" <laughs> uh, yeah, some really. W- I gotta fix my algorithm because I don't like what shows up on my YouTube either. I don't watch those. I mean, I did for a little bit. Um, it's, 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 it's like on narcissism. No, it's, it's all narcissism. <laughs> it's not all narcissism. It's a lot Some of it, it is a like lot of it. a lot of it's it, 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 different types of psychology. Narcissism but, sometimes. But Tim talk Dillon. about a world that's saturated. That it, it's just, and this is what's so interesting to me is like people just get, like it, it, stay a step ahead of the game. So what's popular right now is because everyone's such a uh, fucking maniac and uh, terrible at relationships and dating, and it's just absolutely is everyone a narcissist? It seems like everyone's dating nothing but narcissists. Yeah, I think that word. I think the trick to the get word laid narcissist, is to be a narcissist. Yeah, it might be. The word <laughs> narcissist is overused. The word authentic is overused. I mean, I don't even know what those words mean anymore. It's just so kind of put out there as these buzz terms for something. But that a lot that, of inauthentic narcissists. Yeah, a lot there. of inauthentic. <laughs> <laughs> um, or people pointing fingers at someone who's a narcissist. But um, this person broke my heart, which means they're, they're a narcissist because I'm perfect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The the I guess it's um it, to me it's more shocking the lack of integrity, which I think has a lot to do with authenticity. Um, but I guess people are just really scared. I had a friend ask me. He's like, doesn't anything ever embarrass you? I think we've talked about this on the podcast before. And it's like, yeah, but you know what's more embarrassing? To pretend anything as an adult. You know what I mean? Pretend you're anything other than than what you are as an adult. I think is really embarrassing because for a brain like mine, I can see right through it. And that is like, it shows more than you're trying to hide, you know? And, uh, you know, whatever. Um, okay, so we've got, oh, and then what I I need to do too. Camera will probably poop out in okay, the next five minutes. Is go back and um, take out and, and, and remove some of our, some of our podcasts. <clears throat> just so as we move the forward. old episodes? Yeah, just so as we move forward, anything that I've said, I don't want it to be used against anybody that I care about. Um, so take I, them off of the Patreon too? N- nobody can... Oh, can anyone just watch the Patreon right now? No, you have to be a subscriber. Oh, yeah. So I don't care if they've paid to get in. I can see who you are, I guess. I don't know. I, yeah, I'll take that. I mean, the Patreon doesn't need to be up. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. You know, hey, here's the thing. Is um, and we'll end on this. I've always shown my work as I. That's my. That's what I'm here to give to people. It's not really. I could go into any facet of whatever and succeed because I have talents and I'm multi-talented. So 
it's just choosing what I personally want to put my attention on. And so if it's pole dancing, I showed my videos from day one. You know, I always shared. And I don't suggest that for everybody. You might want to, you know, um, wait until you have actually, until you've committed to something to a certain extent. But I had a thing where like I knew, I mean, I've danced my whole life, but like I knew that that I was just all in, you know, when I started. And um, so through this and like yes having to go there are mistakes you know and that that you can see me learning along the way and because of who I am I can weather those fairly well you know I do have I have some but even that I have some moments where you go like oh that wasn't the cutest you know that's not it doesn't it doesn't look great in the moment but in over arch of everything if you zoom out and you let yourself kind of be patient with it it fits into the whole picture and it's okay and I think that that's what keeps people from doing stuff a lot is it, it comes down to that thing that we try to teach kids from very early on it's okay and absolutely necessary to fuck up and fail all these people of this world that I'm you know very interested in and like being around fuck up and fail and that is the type of career that maybe you want to hide those a little bit. But I offer, you know, yeah, like, like, let's work it out. And that's just really, uh, I think it's very helpful to people that are a little shy to um, uh, be who they are and go after what actually is appealing to them. And that, ooh, we'll end on this. I'll give Flynn my, remember that therapist that I had that was a gazillion dollars and I only used once and then broke Port, up with portal him? Portal person? No, this oh. was Flynn's, he, he's a Instagram guy. And um, one thing that he said that clicked and I was like, oh, and it was In about. one session? Mm-hmm. Damn, and you were like, yeah, fuck you. Yeah, and then I was like, done. <laughs> yeah, no, I, no, that's not how I did it. I said, hey, I got everything that I, I'm quick. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need to be sitting around. You've solved I don't need, all my problems in one I don't session. Need, Why have another? I don't <laughs> need someone saying something to me eight different ways. I'm pretty quick. So, uh, so um, unless I'm not, and you then I'm not. You are literally the best therapist I've ever met. We are done here. So he said, <laughs> and this is free. I mean, he puts a lot of stuff out there for free. He said, um, he, he talks about going, what do you like? You know, what do you like? Do that. That permission had never occurred to me. I like sex. I like plastic surgery. I like talking to people and I like analyzing psychology. This idea and like going in this direction, let's say it works out, would never have occurred to me that it's okay. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give myself permission. Give it's okay. Permission. And I'm going to fucking kill it. Because it feels right. I love you. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs>